You couldn't have asked for better weather for an afternoon of fun. Students at NC State know a smile is just what these families need. Some of them are victims of our deadly tornadoes and have been staying in graduate housing for the last few days. I decided to do this last week um, after hearing about the storm and I know a lot of students helped out at Shaw University. I really wanted to kind of see what I could do. Matt Woodward is the president of NC State's Union Activities Board and he organized the afternoon complete with popcorn, cotton candy and games. Israel Torres has been waiting for his home at the hard-hit Stony Brook Mobile Home Park to get in living condition. He's here with his four children. He says his kids are content and happy thanks to today's event. Sí, claro. ahorita, y más ahorita en, en la situación... He says it's good to have the kids do something like this more so now than ever because of the situation we're in. They don't have to think about what's happening. The kids also got a chance to cuddle with therapy dogs and more. Interactive Playgrounds has donated some carnival equipment. Um, we also have great sponsorships with McDonald's to really get student or really students as well as the families to give them awesome prizes. Bueno, para mí no, no es nada. Torres says living in temporary housing isn't the best situation, but he says he's so thankful for all the help and can't wait to get his family back home. For now, his kids can just kick back, relax, and be kids. An intense night. An intense job. Durham PD's SWAT team geared up and ready to go. This night, cops are arresting an alleged cult leader and child killer, Peter Moses. But this isn't a story about the arrest. It's about this. A dog shot at close range after the standoff ends. As the SWAT team is making sure the house is cleared. But look closely at the video. The dog doesn't appear to be vicious, doesn't appear to lunge at officers, and there's a man sitting on the next stoop. Others standing on the next porch. As not one, not two, but three high-powered rounds are fired in their direction. The holes was right here from where the bullet holes went into. Luckily, they're not hit by ricochets. Sheba the lab wasn't so lucky. 18-year-old Deshaun Porter says his dog was his best friend. I didn't know what to say. Didn't know what to say when he got home and got the news. My neighbor said that they shot my dog several times. Deshaun says he asked police why. As soon as I asked him, he said the dog was, was getting vicious and it wanted to attack. But was he about to attack or just standing at the top of the steps? We took our questions to headquarters to find out, well, what exactly did happen that night? And after several days of phone calls and emails, we finally did get a response. Durham PD says, quote, that officers were entering a high risk situation and that that dog appeared to growl and make aggressive moves. Oh my gosh, that's devastating. Kimberly Album, state director for the Humane Society, doesn't see a vicious dog in our video. Wow, he was just, he was just standing there. Wow, that's absolutely devastating. That's just... It's shocking. She says she sees the unjustified killing of someone's pet. It's very sad. And she believes this SWAT team needs to be trained in dealing with dogs. The way that it appears on this footage is that, you know, it was just a dog that was standing up watching them come up the stairs. As for Deshaun, he's still sad and angry and lonely without Sheba by his side. For the I-Team in Durham, Kelly O'Hara, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. It's kind of gross. Gross is what this girl calls it. Police call it a crime. Northy McCartan Jr. is accused of being a peeping Tom. Yeah, I think it's actually really weird. Um, it wasn't necessary. But McCartan allegedly didn't just peep once, but twice according to court documents. The most recent charge for secret peeping is at this tanning salon we're told at his wife's tanning salon. We caught up with him earlier. My name is Kelly O'Hara. I'm from ABC 11 News. We want to talk to you about the peeping charges. Well, no comment, man. Okay, because right here, according to these warrants, it says you've done it now twice. It you says, can talk to our lawyer, okay? Investigators say this Smithfield man peeped on customers several weeks ago, then tried to fondle a woman while she tried to tan. One of the women says you actually went in there and, and, and touched her body. But allegedly, he's tried to do it a second time and was charged once again on Tuesday. McCartan didn't want to answer our questions, but his wife did say this. We just come home from church. The truth come out. Okay, so you're saying that the allegations aren't true? 
Danielle and Lee Drago are safe, back at home in Cary with their parents. Days ago, they were in Tuscaloosa at the University of Alabama, waiting for a massive tornado. It was Wednesday at about 3, and I was actually walking back from my finance class, and the sirens started going off. About two weeks ago, prior to that, we had uh, a smaller tornado come through that, I mean, we didn't think much of. Really, what we did was just look on on TV and, and our power went out and that's when we knew to get out in the hall. They showed the tornado coming, it's about a mile wide and, and they said it was headed for the stadium which is right on campus. When it was over, the Drago siblings were alive, some of their friends off campus homes damaged, some of their fellow students dead, and many food service employees unaccounted for. And But there's still about 200 missing that, you know, served us food every day and got we got to build relationships with so that's really Really scary. The Dragos stood behind to help and took these pictures, but their parents begged them to come home. They're still in disbelief. It was just, it was surreal. I mean, Tuscaloosa has been my home for the past three years, and it was surreal to see it torn up. I mean, there's still going to be marks of it. There's, there's no way they can rebuild all of that, what happened. It, it, it looks like just shambles. It was completely brown completely smoke in front of you. Um, the house in front of us wasn't even visible from the smoke of the fire. What started as a quiet Saturday afternoon quickly turned dangerous. Residents throughout this area scrambling to get their things and get out. As we drove out we saw trees were lit on fire and it was just completely covered in smoke and there was a million cars. Eyewitness news with exclusive up close access to the hardest hit areas. The earth totally scorched, structures barely saved. Never anything like this. Kat Fotheringham and her family have lived in this neighborhood for years and couldn't believe what they were seeing. And I woke up and the kids were freaking out and they said, some house is on fire, we don't know what's going on, we can't smell anything, I, we can't breathe in our home, we live super nervous. I just started hearing sirens and cops and we live in a like kind of a small little neighborhood where things like this don't happen. But today it did, leaving residents to grab hoses, fighting for their lives and their livelihoods right alongside firefighters. This is, this is where we held the line to, and we turned the fire down between the townhouses until the firemen got here. Well, we were on our way to Florida uh, to get married next Saturday and uh, we thought we might stop here because we heard the skiing was real good. Uh, <laughs> this is crazy. Bob Sheehy learned the hard way today. Even true love can't defeat Mother Nature. We live in Derry, New Hampshire. We don't have this much snow. We live 1,500 miles north of here. We don't have this much snow. Uh, it's a good bonding moment for us. Our kids, her kids and my kids are cramped in the car and now they're cramped in the hotel room. And and granddaughter, and yeah, they're miserable. And it was a miserable day in Nash County for so many. Road conditions treacherous, the snow and wind relentless. So much so, Tom Hubrick had to put the brakes on his own family vacation. We saw the uh, weather forecast, so we decided to uh, leave early uh, and try to beat the snow. And well, as you can see, we, we really didn't beat the snow. In the late morning and early afternoon, so many flakes fell, even kids had seen enough. And what are you going to do while you're still here in the snow? Are you going to try and play in it at all? No. no. And that suited their parents just fine. I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> Been driving all night. <laughs> Meanwhile, DOT crews worked tirelessly to plow the major roads in the area, fighting an uphill battle most of the day, but eventually coming out on top. Welcome news to this soon-to-be newlywed. You know, we're tough. We're from New Hampshire. We, we can got it. South. Yeah, it's we, get, we can get it through soft. Virginia, but North Carolina kicked our butts. <laughs> <laughs>